Hello, my name is Jay. Welcome back to my Tech Vault, and today we're going to be taking a look at the NVIDIA Quadro K5200. This was a graphics card that originally retailed for around $1,700 approximately five years ago. So this card is packing a whopping 8 gigabytes of video memory, which you would say, wow, that's actually pretty decent, even by today's standards. Um, this is GDR5. Um, it's also packing about, I believe, 2,304 CUDA cores, which is equivalent to about a 1050 Ti. And it currently retails for around $250, putting it somewhere in between a 1080 and a 1050 Ti in where it falls because of the video memory and the amount of CUDA cores, it's quite questionable. But it is GDR5, uh, eight gigabytes of it, and also you can get two of them and SLI them. So for today's video, we are going to go through and egg over the specs of these guys. Um, I'm going to be testing one in today's video. If this video gets a couple likes, I'll might consider going through and SLIing them. I gotta find a currently gotta find a motherboard to test that with because I don't actually have a motherboard that supports SLI uh, that's not in my main system. So with that being said, we're gonna be testing this card in a couple of different games. First off, we're gonna be testing it across a lot of the common titles today, um, some of the more stressful titles, and also some pretty popular, um, not really stressful titles as well. But we're going to just try to do a quick and wide benchmark to kind of give an accurate idea of whether or not this card really holds up. So another thing to talk about and a real quick thing I like to talk about before we get into a lot of these kind of videos is that this is a Quadro card. This is supposed to be professionally optimized. And by professionally optimized, I mean that the drivers are specifically built so they do not crash. So that's what you really trade off with, especially because this is probably going to come out um, with some pretty horrible performance, especially because it's not any bit optimized for gaming. It's going to end up having a card that is rather powerful, yes, but the optimizations that have been put into it is so that it doesn't crash and has a lot of fallbacks rather than having a much faster card that has some potential to crash. And that's pretty much the trade-off that you always pay for when you pay for these high-end cards, especially for the professional workstations. They're, not, they're designed not to crash because if you're working on something important, it, it shouldn't crash, especially when you're paying a premium for it. Now, when you get into gaming cards, though, they are a little bit more optimized for gaming, and crashing isn't the end of the world, so that's where you end up getting some better performance out of it. So these cards are going to be running the optimized uh, Quadro drivers, so professional workstation drivers trying to play games. My bet is it's going to be complete garbage, and it's going to prove that these cards are not worth your time whatsoever, um, as about a bazillion other people have done before me. But let's go over quick some of the specs. So this maximum resolution is up to 4K. So these cards each can pack up to 4K. 4K. On the sides, we've got um, two DVI ports and two display ports. And surprisingly, it's quite modern. Uh, I do think these cards definitely still hold up uh, as a decent graphics card, even for 2019 standards. Um, we've got 8 gigabytes of GDR5 memory, which we've already talked about. We've got a 256-bit memory interface. We've got 192 gigabytes per second for the memory bandwidth. And we've got 2,304 CUDA cores per graphics card. Um, and then we've got a max power consumption of 150 watts, and this is also rocking PCIe Gen 3. So it is still quite modern, um, and these cards definitely should still uh, be a relative, relevant card if you are doing workstation tasks. But for people like me, or people that mostly watch this channel, which is a combination of workstation users and gaming users, this card is not going to fall uh, well in between those hybrid type of users. So, um, quick conversation about this as well as it should support all the latest uh, software DirectX 12 all the latest um, drivers and stuff so we should be able to get the latest drivers but I still don't think that's going to make a difference this card is probably going to play horribly and we will find out shortly in this video so without further ado let's throw the Quadro into a system I'm going to drop it into one of my test systems and we are going to see what happens when we put this bad guy into some games. Good luck. So I'm back. Uh, I've got myself a little setup right here uh, with a recording on this. Uh, we're going to uh, try and play a complete game normally. I've got, as you can see here, I've got this packing the NVIDIA Quadro K5200 with its 8GB of video memory. We're going to see exactly how this actually performs 
in a pretty regular game of PUBG. We're going to test a couple other games, don't worry about it. But for the most part, I've got a younger brother over here that's trying to make me laugh and a questionable setup right here on a questionable, even more questionable PC. So I'm going to do my best, especially with this little microphone over here, to communicate with the team members while I try and play a quick game. So, let's get into it, shall we? So let's turn first person player, I like first person. And uh, let's get the setup real quick. Um, actually, I might want to move this on the side. Let's also get settings set up so that I automatically p don't need to push the talk. So let's do audio. Let's do audio. Um, chill. Let's do always on. Team only. Apply. So now let's get into a game and uh, we'll see how this goes. So uh, you never know the groups of people, kind of people you get on here. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so first off, I just want to say that this is the pretty much the start sequence in the plane. Usually, this is actually one of the most least laggiest uh, parts of the game. And actually, drop dropping or in the parachuting wasn't that bad. Uh, there was a little bit of an issue here. And then once I got back onto the ground, I actually didn't have too many issues. The FPS actually picked up a lot more. Um, I also did a lot more investigation into what was exactly causing these lag spikes. Uh, there were quite a bit few of them. And the low FPS, especially since all these settings were at bare minimum, uh, is 100% attributed to the graphics card. Uh, the CPU itself has actually run PUBG on other graphics cards just fine, actually quite impressively. So this is definitely something that is uh, solely a GPU issue. And there are definitely some times where this is completely unplayable, especially when you're shooting for 60 FPS across the board to at least have playable gameplay. Now I did notice also a little bit of a drop. I saw we saw about an average of 50 FPS on land, and I saw about maybe a 42 average um, all across the board and ve using vehicles. So yeah, I did like to play a little bit of PUBG. I thought it was a good game just because of a little bit of wide range of experiences and stuff. Uh, I got to get a little bit of drifting practice in uh, since they've definitely improved the boat mechanics and actually vehicle mechanics altogether. Um, but for the most part, uh, this actually ended up being a really bad game because it just we drove for like a whole time and we ended up getting a squad drop right on us. But that was pretty much that. Now on to Rainbow Six Siege, a little bit of the preparation stage. Uh, I had to call my younger brother for this one. He's an amazing player at this game. So uh, as you can see, he gets a magical one bit of health and he's going to go pull a clutch in the game. So he then is going to get three kills and finish three kill total kills and then uh, finish the game off and uh, get a win. So that is going to be uh, the game. So that was the NVIDIA Quadro K5200. And honestly, I was actually kind of disappointed. For the performance we got out of a lot of games, uh, I was looking into it too, and it wasn't CPU or RAM bottlenecks, it was solely GPU bottlenecks. The drivers installed, especially for the professional workstation stuff, is not any bit optimized for gaming. You would assume with 8 gigabytes of video memory, uh, about the similar amount of CUDA cores to about a 1050 Ti, that you would have performance, if not on par equivalent, to a 1050 Ti, and you get something similar. But instead, we didn't even beat out an RX, or R9, 290 or 270, we didn't even beat that out. We didn't even beat out a GTX 660. We didn't even beat out a GTX 570. We didn't beat that out, yet this card is only five years old compared to some of those cards which are almost 10 years old. So really it comes down to, you know, the hardware is here, without a doubt. There is definitely hardware here. And I would say that the architecture behind it is also quite similar, if not uh, maybe slightly bit off and older, um, but the architecture is still relatively the same. So you're talking about a card that has really no hardware differences uh, except more video memory, which should be performing better, yet it's not. So, you know, this was more of a personal thing that I, I, I really wanted to see for myself as I know people have always said that, you know, professional workstation cards are a big waste of money if you're going to do gaming. And with that, I'd have to say, yeah, it looks like that's the case. Um, I know that there's, at least with my performance with testing this card, it's obviously this card is now almost, what, four or five years old uh, since it came out in 2014. And you can clearly see that it did not perform. I uh, had a lot of lag spikes, had to have all my settings low, um, even have playable frames. Uh, some of the games did fine, but for the most part, 
it was really difficult to get a solid frame rate um, and a something that was at least playable on here. And I'm sure this card has applications, but for the most part, it was not in gaming. And for what this channel is mainly focused on, which is workstations, gaming, and a combination thereof, uh, for me especially, it's something important to have where you can do both gaming and play video games, because that's what most of us do nowadays. We do uh, well gaming and then we also do workstation tasks, so that's what most of us do is we play games, we stream, we do YouTube videos, something like a combination of that. And for you know this car, which is almost five years old, uh, I'm sure at some point it probably played games okay, but for now this thing is not up there on the list of recommendations I'd have. And especially for a whopping 250 bucks for a car that's supposed to be uh, equivalent to a 1050 Ti, you can almost get a 1080 now for $300. So really the point is, why get this if you can get a 1080 and get much better performance even in workstation tasks? So that has been the NVIDIA Quadro K5200. If you've enjoyed today's video, please feel free to give it a like. Um, this video took a good bit of time and uh, honestly, oh, I'm kind of disappointed. Actually kind of disappointed. But thank you guys very much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.